Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and last time we talked about the origins of the rosary. This time, some of the history of the rosary, and the good that it did at what's called Lepanto. After the first introduction of the rosary and its use during the time of the Cathars, people sadly began to forget about it. Until, in 1460, very few people prayed the rosary at all. In that year, Blessed Alain de la Roche, a Dominican priest living in what we now call Western France, received a message from Jesus telling him that by just preaching about the rosary, he could lead many souls to the right path. He started preaching about the rosary almost immediately. De La Roche would only live for another 15 years after that, but in that short amount of time, over 100,000 people had joined his association, which was called a confraternity. Over the next hundred years, the legacy of De La Roche would live on, as the practice of the rosary spread everywhere, becoming much more common as a devotional practice, and many small miracles happened during that time and have occurred since, when people prayed the rosary. But a very large and noticeable one took place in 1571, in the Gulf of Patras, near western Greece, just a short distance from a town that we now call Nafpaktos, but which at the time was known as Lepanto. There's a lot more to get into about Lepanto, but to make a long story short, it was a time when Muslim forces had conquered and invaded the Christian-controlled African lands, as well as large sections of eastern Europe. They controlled Spain for a long time, too. But by 1571, Spain was free of Muslim control, and had been for over 80 years. The Muslim forces had spent a lot of time and manpower building a huge naval fleet, which they intended to use to crush what was left of the Christian religion in Europe, with their ultimate goal being complete domination of Rome. Hearing their threats, Pope St. Pius V implored the leaders of Europe to stop fighting amongst themselves and join forces against this threat. Sadly, most ignored him, but forces from various places in Italy joined the effort, as well as the Knights of Malta and Spain, who, for obvious reasons, recognized the seriousness of the threat. The numbers of ships and men were almost even on both sides, but favoring the Muslims overall. However, the real danger was that the Muslim sailors and soldiers were more experienced, and their ships approached from multiple directions. The commander of the Christian forces was an honest, humble man named... Don Juan. He was a prince from Austria, and he forbade people on his ship from blaspheming, swearing, or gambling. But most importantly, they all prayed the rosary every day, while they prepared for the battle. The Pope himself placed the fleet under the protection of the Queen of the Rosary. The battle began at dawn on October 7th, and ended that very same day at five in the afternoon. Out of a Muslim fleet of 274 ships, only 45 were left intact, a loss of 229 vessels. The Christian fleet had only lost 12 ships in that same battle, and the loss of Christian soldiers in the battle was less than one-fifth of what their enemies had suffered. Don Juan declared that the true victor had been Our Lady that day, and the Muslim forces from Turkey would never be that strong a naval threat again. Next time, what good has the Rosary accomplished? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.